All right, you're welcome back. We're going to be switching gears now, talking about something that's become, um, it's always been a part of our, our, our national life, and actually internationally, something that um, we have to deal with uh, as a part of life. But unfortunately, we don't necessarily like to talk about, and it's domestic violence. And it's become um, increasingly a talking point in Nigeria today, especially because social media has made people, you know, have more of a voice, you know, and people are, are becoming more, you know, vocal about things like this. I have here with me someone who's definitely versed <laughs> in this topic, Titi Lola Vivo at Deni from the Lagos State Domestic and Sexual Violence Response Team. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for most people, I'm sure most people didn't even know we had this team, and it's it's one of the it's one of the things that people need to because people almost treat it like a taboo topic, you know, when both men and women, when there are domestic issues, neighbors see things, family members see things, everybody wants to keep it quiet, mm -hmm. you know. Um, how do we start, first of all, to start having these conversations honestly and openly without necessarily feeling shamed about it? I think we're already at that stage. As you've, um, as you've said, yeah. we have, there's an increase in reporting of domestic violence, particularly in Lagos State. You have neighbors calling on behalf of a woman they hear in distress. You have people reporting on behalf of their nieces. So we are having, the conversation has started. I think what is critical is we need to keep up the momentum. We need to always ensure that it's always at the forefront. Front burner, we're talking about this. We're naming and shaming these perpetrators. We're prosecuting these perpetrators. And survivors are getting succor one way or the other. Just, just to give us a, a kind of an idea, this is this is May, the first week in May now. This year alone, how many calls have you gotten on an average, or how many calls you get a month? Okay, so like a, give, do a day, yeah, a okay. day on, on a our daily hotline. Basis. Daily, we get roughly seven. Okay. Um, in January, we had a total of um, eighty people coming, domestic violence come survivors oh. coming, working clients, and then in March we had over a hundred. So it is increasing. Yeah. That's, that's, that's actually very, as much as it's, it's sad that, th that these things are happening, it's impressive that people are actually you people know, are coming into... Yes. So how does, your, how does your agency work with these right. people now? Do you prosecute? Do you just counsel? What exactly do you do? So we, we seek to provide a holistic response to issues of domestic violence. So we're um, survivor-centered and we seek to increase offender responsibility. So survivor-centered, we want to know what does the survivor want. Government knows what we want, but we need to know what our survivors want. Sometimes. It's a phone call from somebody from government calling the, um, sus the um, alleged perpetrator. Sometimes it's to facilitate separation. Sometimes psychosocial support. So our services actually cut across. We have legal, we have provision of shelter, we can go in and rescue. So we like to see ourselves as a one-stop shop. Yeah. for um, survivors of domestic and sexual violence survivors. What, what is survivors. domestic violence? I, I know it's, it's a very, it's a very, it's a very well-used term, yes. but there seems to be a belief that until you have a black eye, mm. you know, and you're bleeding profusely, it hasn't necessarily constituted that. What do you consider domestic and sexual violence? Okay, so domestic violence generally is a um, range of behaviors used by some, one person or somebody to dominate and control another who is in the, they both have a cohabiting relationship. So forms of domestic violence, you have physical abuse, which is the common one. Everybody knows that one. There's verbal, there's emotional, there's harassment, there's stalking, there's economic abuse. A man leaves 500 naira for his, a family of three. And to expect sustain change. <laughs> and expect change, yeah. Expect to have a fabulous soup, you know, in the afternoon. So domestic violence cuts across. Yeah. And in Lagos State, we actually have a law, the Prevention Against Domestic Violence of 2007, and it clearly articulates different forms of abuse. Okay. So, um, when people come up to you and say, oh, I've been verbally abused, a lot of people don't necessarily, especially in this part, consider it as anything. Oh, mm. he called me names, or she called me names, mm. or he always calls me names, mm. and it makes me feel like I'm less of a person. Mm. Most people say, ah. Uh, it's normal. Even with the physical part, people think it's normal. But the verbal part, it's still very much played down. And Do you have people who come in with verbal abuse uh, cases on, the, on a consistent basis? Yes, we do. Because it's not just somebody that um, is alleged perpetrator of domestic violence doesn't just hit. Violence escalates. So most times it starts with verbal and emotional abuse, and then it escalates to physical. So we've had people come in to say, this person insults me, he 
ridicules me in public, I have no self-esteem and all of that. So at that moment, we're looking at providing psychosocial therapy. How can we help her gain, her or him, gain their self-esteem back? Yeah. And then take a decision. Is this a relationship I'm willing to remain in? Or is this something I need to walk away from? People always talk about signs as well. Mm. You know, they're like, oh, why didn't you walk away early enough? Mm. Is, first, two, two, is a two-fold question I want to ask now. What are those signs you should look out for mm. before it gets to a point where, quote, unquote, because people die from it, yes. so where it's too late, mm. you know? And secondly, um, is it something, do people change? Mm. Because sometimes they say, oh, I stayed because I thought he was going to change. Mm. Or because they say, I've seen someone change. Is this something that you should hold on to because you believe the person can change? Anybody can change. But let, let me answer the first question. So there are some red flags you should look out for if you're dating someone. So first one is quick involvement. Um, perpetrators of domestic violence generally don't want to court for too long. So they don't, you don't, they don't expose their true colors or their true being. So if you see somebody, if you're with somebody that wants to rush into a marriage, sharp, 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 sharp that's a red flag. That's a no-no. Somebody that is obviously abusive or threatens to hit you, that is already a red flag. Jealousy, overbearing, somebody that wants to isolate you from your family. Because that's what domestic violence is. They want to control. Want full control. Yes, so that you don't have any support system to, you know, push you in the right direction. There are just little signs like that. Anger. How does the person treat this, um, um, somebody on the, a fellow driver? Or how does the person treat a nanny or a staff? These are signs that you should be looking out for, because that will determine how the person will treat you. Yeah. So, is it, but the second part is anybody can change. So you believe it's at what point you now know that okay, enough is enough. At what mm. point do you say, yeah, this is definitely not going to change. When are there things? Is there like a sign? That, are there things you should know that okay, at this point, 